This will be a quick demo of how to create an AR object using Blender, Dropbox, and a simple QR code generator. The objective is to be able to put a QR code somewhere out in the world, like we see here, so that when you scan it, you can then very quickly see the object in the place where you are, straight through the camera on your device. So here we have in the um, Spruce Hill Bird Sanctuary, this little model of a praying mantis that comes to life. A great ad, um, advantage of this method is it doesn't require any special apps. It just uses the inbuilt AR capabilities that um, is present in all um, iOS devices, so iPhones and iPads. The process of taking a model um, in Blender and exporting it so it can be used as an AR object that can be accessed by an iOS device is incredibly simple. Um, here we have this animated um, mantis. Um, the USB-D export function, or I should backtrack to say the format we're going to use here is called USDZ. USD stands for Universal Scene Description. Um, there's different flavors of this, like USDA, C, and Z, for example. Um, the USD, A, and C formats are used more for exporting projects that can then be edited in multiple programs. For example, if you were working in Blender and collaborating with someone in Maya, you could share the same project and work on it by keeping it in that format. USDZ is a slightly different version of it. The Z stands for zip because it has compression incorporated into it. And it is more akin to the glyphed file format, which is optimized for web use and augmented reality. Um, both the USDZ and the GLB, which is part of the glyph standard, um, are excellent as assets for um, game engines. So um, here we are in Blender and we're looking at this rigged mantis, which is bouncing back and forth. Uh, I can stop the animation on that for a second. It's kind of a cute position. Um, we can look at it in solid view, material view. So this mantis is animated with um, rigging, which is what um, these structures here are, which I'll hide. Um, but this process works for other types of animation too. So rigging is compatible and basic transform animations, like having things scale or rotate or move around will work too. Um, Animations based on modifiers like the wave or curve modifier or animations um, based on physics simulations will take a different step to make compatible in AR, um, which I will add an accompanying video for. Um, Android um, is a little slower to moving towards standardizing AR on their devices. New devices are um, compatible with the GLB format, and I will have to add sort of a second resource for making this specialized for Android. Um, so the most important thing to do before exporting your model is actually to just check the dimensions of that model. So I can see my dimensions change because this creature is you know, getting up and crouching, so different places will be different. But when it's standing up, I can see that the Z dimension, the height, is 1.3 meters. So that's, you know, a perfectly reasonable height. You want to make sure your model isn't like 15 meters or something like that. Um, because then when the model appears, it will be so big that the person doesn't really know what they're looking at. It'll just be kind of like giant shapes and pixels overwhelming their view. Um, unless that's what you want. If you want to make a giant house that you can walk around in, then you should make a giant. But most things you want to just, the point is just make sure the scale is what you want it to be when you see the thing in AR. So now we'll just go to export and we will go to USDZ, or sorry, just USD asterisk is what it says here, universal scene description. And here we have the export dialog for this. I'm gonna give this a new name. Um, I'm just gonna save it to the desktop right now. Um, so we have a few um, options we can click in here. We can add support for animation, support for hair. I don't have hair simulation in this, but it's pretty cool that you can support that. Um, there is not a box to check to choose what kind of USD file we are making, which is a little bit of a interface failure on my, in my opinion. And I think it'll probably get changed with a newer version of Blender. But for now, 
you can see in the file, it says USDC. We delete the C and we add the letter Z. So now it's saving it as a USDZ. And that is sort of like the unintuitive way to change the format. And it isn't just changing the extension. It is incorporating compression and optimizing the piece for AR. So you can see the animation frames go right through. Of course, for this assignment, you don't have to make an animated object. So now if we um, just look at our desktop real quick on a Mac, we can easily just um, use Quick Look to look at our 3D file. Um, and here you can see a much simpler USDZ. This is just using basic animations like transform, like um, rotate and move and enlarge. But I think it's actually a pretty cool AR sculpture when putting it into a space. Um, if you are working on a PC, um, Windows, I've been doing some research and I can't find a good way to make native um, USD support, like a good viewer for viewing these files on Windows. Um, hopefully that's something that I'll find soon. But for now, um, what I recommend doing is, sorry, the Zoom interface just went in front of what I was looking at. There's this um, app called USDZ Viewer. It's just usdz-viewer.net. And as you can see, we can grab our file and drop it in here and we get a great preview of it. Um, it looks a little darker here and that's just because it's using a different light box to illuminate it. Um, USDC files will actually export your lights and stuff. Those are not for AR, so that's not what you want to be making. USDZ, like Z for Zebra, those um, use kind of a default light box that the viewer has to illuminate the subject. So it'll look slightly different in different viewers. And here you can see we can drop another one in too to see that that also works. Um, perfectly good way to preview your file. Um, once you've exported this file um, from there, it's really simple. Um, you just want to go and upload um, your file. Um, you can share, essentially what you want is to create a direct link to your file. Um, there's a few ways to do that. You could do it with GitHub. Um, as far as I can tell, um, Google Drive and um, Box and most of those services will only link you to kind of like the app's navigation interface. But um, in the case of Dropbox, um, we can kind of optimize that. So here, you know, I can go to Mantis Rig and click copy link. And then this website here is a QR code generator. The one here is called Hover Code. I like it because it makes circle templates, but it doesn't really matter. If you just search QR code generator, there's tons of these that you can use. And here I will paste in that Dropbox link. And we're not there yet. We have to do a few little changes here. So looking closely at our address bar, where it says www.dropbox.com, we want to delete www and replace that with DL for download. Whoops, that moved. So HTTP dl.dropbox.com. And then all the way at the end of the address where it says dl equals zero, we want to change that to dl equals one. And that's going to create like a forced download. So um, when you look at the QR code with a phone, it'll just say, do you want to view it? Do you want to download it? And then you're, you're there. You don't have to go to Dropbox or anything. So here we've got our QR code and we can just test the scannability. All these websites have lots of fun ways to tweak the aesthetic of your code. Um, I have it say, scan me, made of triangles, diamonds, whatever. Um, and then once you're ready to go, you just hit generate QR code and um, you can download it as a PNG or an SVG. And then you can print that, um, tape it to something, print it as a sticker, whatever. And now when this code is in your space, um, scanning with a phone will create that experience where someone will be able to interface with the object. Um, it would be great if the object just popped up and it didn't give you the option to click view or download. Um, but it's still pretty great that you can view an AR object through your phone just by seeing a QR code without having to download any special app like Google AR Viewer or um, like Adobe Aero or anything. It'll just work natively on the device, which I think gives it a lot of um, accessibility.